Hi, Bowen. How are you? Doing good. <laughs> it's good to be here. I know, I know. You've been here before. A long time ago, you uh, preached a, uh, at a chapel once, I think, or something. I don't know. You don't know. You don't remember. You know, when you're at an age like yeah, ours, yeah, 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 you yeah, yeah. kind of forget. I know, like after, after a couple of years, it's like, oh, what, what did I do, you know? But yes, yeah, I do yeah. remember coming yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome uh, to our podcast. Yeah. And thanks for uh, saying yes to the podcast. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where were you born and uh, where were you raised? Uh, if you were raised in a different area, how did you come to, come to California? Uh, tell me a little bit, little bit about yourself. Okay, so my story is a little bit boring because okay, I we'll was, see, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so I was born in LA, but oh, I okay. grew up uh, most of my. I guess now it's sort of even now, but I grew up mostly in my childhood in Orange County in Huntington okay. Beach. Okay, and so I came. I guess like growing up, I lived in an area that was predominantly Caucasian. I didn't okay. really have a whole lot of like. Uh, friends who happened to be Korean or Asian. I see. So I, see. I grew up in, mostly in the in the beach culture. So surf and skate culture was sort of like the yeah. life that I grew up in. So you you did surfing and uh, skating, huh? No, I didn't go. I didn't do surfing, but a lot of my friends were. Okay, okay. And so okay, it was okay. really funny because just not too long ago, I okay. met up with one of my friends who uh -huh. I've known for a long time. Okay. He's a big surfer, and he was like going. Bowen, we got to get you out there in the ocean <laughs> because you know all these surfers growing up as yeah, a kid, yeah, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. never surf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So part of that hesitancy was just a number of things. One is that I, you know, I had to wear glasses. So oh, okay, at that okay. time, I'm like going, man, I'm blind as a bat. I mm. wouldn't know where or what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, just got, I enjoyed the ocean, mm -hmm. but I. Don't know if I really wanted to be in it as okay. much. Okay. Okay. So you grew up in Huntington Beach area, right? Uh, so you went through elementary, junior high, and high school there. Yes. Okay. And then I heard that you went to uh, Art Center for college. So yeah. Well, wow. Th there was a little bit of a gap. So okay. I, I didn't do the, I guess, the traditional, I guess, Korean American yeah, uh, yeah. experience in terms of education. Okay. So I went through like. I went to junior college, mm -hmm. did my general ed through that. Okay. Went to Cal State Long Beach. Okay. Uh, I was actually aspiring to be a, a high school teacher because oh, wow. I had I such a I, wow. ha I had such an, a positive experience in high school. Okay. okay. Uh, having a, a great high school teacher. Okay. I even know the name of my teacher. His name was Mr. Henderson. Oh, okay. And such because of that experience, I uh -huh. was just like had such a, a love for history. Okay. And um, I wanted to do that, uh, you know, later in life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just kind of like how life happens, there are different curveballs that mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. And so there were a, f a few different things that happened I between my, I guess, being at uh, Cal State Long Beach mm -hmm. and into going into Art Center. In between that, there was even my experience of being at a Bible college. Oh, really? Yes. I went Which to a Bible one? college. I went to Calvary Chapel Bible College. Oh, Calvary Chapel Bible College. Okay. Yeah. That's located in Escondido? Or what no, no. Oh, so it used to be located in Marietta Hot oh, Springs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even before that, it was up in Twin Peaks, which is near Lake o Arrowhead. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Uh, so you went to Junior College, Cal State Long Beach Bible College, and then to Art Center. Yeah. That's a quite a transition. Yes. There, what it happened was there? Quite a <laughs> So I think growing up as a kid, uh -huh. uh, I really loved drawing. And it was something that I enjoyed doing. And I would doodle and do that even yeah, yeah, yeah. through grade school, high school, and even college. Okay. And if you saw my notes, mm -hmm. I would have like some doodle off to the side doing different things. So it wasn't the fact that I was not paying attention to uh -huh. class, but I was sort of doing that while I was listening. Yeah, that was his passion, I guess. Yeah, so yeah. that was something that I enjoyed doing. Uh -huh. But for a long time, you know, my parents were a little bit hesitant, like, do we really want our son to pursue yeah, this or Typical not? Korean American Yeah, exactly. Parents. And so yeah. then I think as I, I kind of went along my trajectory, they mm -hmm. kind of said, you know what, let, let, my, let, let him follow his passion. Okay. And so that's what... Um, they did. And okay. so I have to okay. say that uh, my parents were just really, I guess, not a very typical okay. Korean uh, okay. parents. Okay. 
And I, I think I, one of the really wonderful things about my parents were they, they believed in God. Okay. And they were Christians. Okay. And so I grew up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. I think that's very typical, a lot yeah. of the immigrant yes, uh, yes. experience for yes. a lot of the Korean Americans yes. coming yeah. into the U.S. I mean, I know that our center, Pasadena Art Center, is a really, really prestigious art college. And what, well, you know, I don't know much about art, okay? So you got to enlighten me and enlighten the audience. So I would guess there's different majors among art. So what kind of... What, what kind of you know art did you study? So my uh, my focus was fine arts with okay. a minor in illustration. So okay. that was the area that I wanted to go okay, about okay. Like and pursue. Drawing and painting, right, right, right. Okay. And and a lot of it was also my uh, interest in doing illustration. So okay. that okay. is something that uh, I really enjoy doing. You know, you mentioned you're Christian. You uh, grew up in a Christian family. Uh, what church did you do you do you grow up in? Can you tell me? You know, I'm just remembering my childhood, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. do remember that I, as a as a child, my parents we went to a, a small Korean church. Uh, I don't really know what the uh, denomination in, was. In at Huntington that Beach. No, it was actually in Santa Ana, I believe. Okay. Santa so Ana. my parents, they, you know, it was the typical commuter, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah sure. even culture back yeah. in the days. Yeah. And so we would drive a, a bit of distance just to get to church. Mm -hmm. And so I remember it was a, I think it was a first generation Korean speaking church. Okay. I don't okay. really remember it being that there was anything in terms of even an English ministry okay. or even tailored to you know, English speaking kids. Okay, okay. But I remember just kind of growing up in that culture for some time. Mm -hmm. But then after uh, that church sort of had some issues or some things mm -hmm. where my parents decided to go to a different church. Okay. And so we were kind of going, jumping around different churches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We landed at uh, Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. Oh. And I, actually at that time, there was a small Korean um, ministry there. But then I think my parents, they were just drawn or they heard about Calvary Chapel. Okay, and so okay. they wanted to kind of check that out. Okay. So what ended up happening was I, end, I ended up just staying there because they kind of went to an, another church because they just jumped into oh, a, a different church. They yeah. went to a Korean church. Okay, okay, okay. And they st stayed with that church. Okay. And then my sister, she ended up going to another uh, Korean uh, church mm -hmm. too that mm -hmm. was very different from my parents. Oh. And so if you can imagine our whole family Family. We what? all like went to different <laughs> churches, uh -huh. but that's the default, right? We kind of yeah. sort of like go to uh, different churches yeah, sure, and want to sure. do go where we would feel like sure, we want to be at. Sure, sure. And so, but I, I want to say that when I was at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa, this is back in I guess in the mid '80s. Mm -hmm. and so Pastor Chuck Smith was mm -hmm. very much uh, yes, involved yes. in that ministry, mm -hmm. and so I think during that time that was one of my m most formative years okay. of my faith. Okay, that really shaped and grounded me. That was your like uh, high school years, or yes, what? my high, high school, school years. Okay. So I came to know Christ. And a person, you know, because I, I, you know, it was my parents' faith, mm -hmm. but I had to come to this uh, uh, place where I had to make a decision. Yes, do I yes. want to follow my parents' faith mm -hmm. or do I want to kind of go in my own direction? Mm -hmm. But because I uh, went to a youth uh, retreat, a high school retreat, mm -hmm. I think that was kind of the turning point for my mm -hmm. uh, faith. And so because of that, Became to uh, came to know Christ through that experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, through that, I think my early years of my faith, those were very important because okay, okay, I okay. think one of the real uh, wonderful things I really enjoyed mm -hmm. about Calvary Chapel was mm -hmm. they really um, put an emphasis on Scripture. Yes, they yes. really believe that Scripture is really important yeah. in in a in a believer's mm -hmm, life. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I had such a, uh, a love for the Word of God. Yeah. Um, and I think that was something that was very important in my mm -hmm. faith, in my formative years. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was something that I, I look back and I go, wow, that was so yeah. important, but it was also so, so um, impactful. Yeah, yeah. So you were in a, this typical uh, mainstream American Caucasian, you know, dominant church. And then, and then after that, I, I know that you went to a KMEM Context Church uh, later on. So how did that transition occur? Okay, so that's a whole different story in itself, okay, too. Okay. So, right, um, it. so, so I, you know, like much later in, I guess in the late 1990s, I uh -huh. actually went to Korea. And I lived okay. in Korea for a year and a half. I didn't know that. Yeah, so... What were you, you doing there? Yeah, so, yeah, that, that's a good <laughs> question, right? 
But no, um, you know, growing up in uh -huh. a predominantly a white neighborhood, yes, and even yes. just being in the suburbs, didn't have any Korean friends or mm -hmm. anything like that. Yes. Uh, my my dad, he actually said, "Hey, you know, I'm going to go visit your grandma. Would you be interested in going?" Mm. And then so we went one time in 1995, just for the summer. Okay. And then. We came back and my dad just put planted another seed and said, hey, you know, I'm going to go visit your grandma. And, you know, these days a lot of people are going over there to teach English oh. and learn the language. Okay. And so, you know, it was sort of like my gap year. And in some I see, instance, I see, I see, I see. it was like a late, late, late gap year. Yeah. yeah so yeah. because I was During still like trying to... College years, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I just went over to Korea, uh -huh. lived there for about a year and a half. Um, teaching English? Teaching English okay. and then learning Korean. Okay. So kind of going back to my cultural identity, cultural roots. Wow. And so I was a late bloomer. I, okay. A lot of times people will do that during, you know, much earlier, yeah, but yeah, I did yeah, it yeah. much later. And yeah. so when I did that, I think I, I, I had this connection with just really, um, I think part of my experience in Korea, I also found myself connected to a uh, Christian community, a church, church there, and, and also a fellowship. And so through that, I got to know a lot of the uh, Korean Americans. Mm -hmm. And then upon coming back, I just made a decision. I'm like going, well, I think maybe I should kind of get connected to a church, like a Korean yeah, American yeah. church. Yeah, yeah. So hold on, hold on. So you're in Korea and you're connected to uh, Korean Americans there. Uh -huh. So is that in Korea also a KM and EM context church? Yes. Wow, okay. I heard that those there's a lot of churches like that in Korea these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, so okay. I, I went there, um, so I was there for maybe a year and a half, and mm -hmm. then um, I learned about that whole experience there, okay, and then okay. I wanted to come back, okay. and I think because I, I had that already that initial connection, I was like, okay, maybe I should find a church community that's yes. kind of like that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, in some respects, did the reverse. A, yes, lot of, yes. a lot of people will go starting growing up in a Korean or Korean American yes, church, yes. and then they'll try to go to some place that's yeah. not mainstream. Yeah, mainstream. But yeah, I right. went from mainstream into a more that's ethnic Korean American yeah, context. That's yeah, yeah. Coming back, you searched for a KMU context church, and uh, so how was that experience? So I initially started at a, I guess it was mostly like a small Korean speaking church mm -hmm. that was just starting to develop a um, uh, English speaking church okay, or okay. congregation. Okay. And so um, at that time it was very small. And mm -hmm. then I think, you know, I, I checked it out. I mm -hmm. went there a few times. I actually I sat through like a Korean, uh, you know, service, so, you know, yeah. where I'm just like, all right, all right trying to listen in and just kind of follow. Because I also wanted to maintain and keep my Korean like the language because yes, I yes. don't speak it regularly at yes. home. And mm -hmm. so I'm like going, okay, so I learned all of that over a year and a half. Mm -hmm. how, to, how can I maintain that? Mm -hmm. And so I just decided, okay, maybe just going to a Korean, Korean American church would be good. Okay. So I did that. And then when I went to Art Center, um, mm -hmm. through a series of different events, I got connected to a church that was a little bit more local. Okay. So I went to that mm -hmm. and I actually went through a home fellowship group mm -hmm. that I gathered in someone's home before I actually attended the main service. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. I went through like the back way. Okay. Went through that, got to know people through the, the home fellowship. Okay. And then from there, went to the uh, service. And it mm -hmm. was actually a, a prominent uh, Korean American church at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was it Yongnak? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. So at that time, who was the Ian Pastor there at Yongna. Jim Bob. Oh, Jim Bob was there. Yeah, Jim oh, Bob. Wow. I got to I got to um, just be a part of that um, at the tail end of his uh, time at Yeah. Okay. Yongna. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So how long how, how long were you at Yongna? I think I was there for gosh now since I guess since two thousand three, mm -hmm. and then um, I I think I stayed there at least. But because it went through a lot of changes. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah yes. I think I, I, you know, more fairly recent. Okay, okay, okay. After it changed uh, names okay. and, and the church itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, being at a uh, KMEM context church, uh, coming from a more mainstream, uh, you know, white Caucasian culture, and then I, I'm sure that you have certain expectations. As Kind of played out according to your expectation, or were you kind of disappointed, or how how was the whole experience? 
from a uh, uh, second generation that's coming from like mainstream American uh, cultural context? I'd say it was definitely different. Okay. Um, okay. So because I was so used to, um, you know, Calvary Chapel. Yes, it, yeah. It's very casual. Yeah, yeah. I remember even just going to a church at Calvary yeah, yeah. where you could just show up with sh short pants and a t-shirt yeah, yeah. and even sometimes a sandal. Yeah. Very casual. Yeah. And then you just show up. Yeah. Um, so when I went to uh, uh, that context, Young Knock, uh, in the early stages, um, I noticed that everybody was dressed up. Even in the EM, people were dressed up. And so then... I was just, I think people kind of gave me this look and going, are you at the wrong place or something? Because, and then I, I even remember one person actually said, um, how disrespectful of you to be coming to church like that. Because it's just like, you know. This so is, that's not coming from the KM side, but EM side, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so this person was telling me that, hey, okay. why are you dressed that way? Okay. And then, you know, I was, I was ready to just like say, right back at her and just like saying, Oh, God's not so concerned about your outward appearance, yeah, but yeah, your yeah. inward. But I didn't say that. <laughs> but I just kind of said, all right, you know, whatever, you know, yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but later on, I think people uh, changed, you know, yeah, yeah, over yeah. time yeah. as people dressed down. Yeah. But I think I came during the time when I think people were a little bit more dressed up. Yeah. So I, I wasn't used to that. Okay, I was okay, kind okay, of more okay. like, wow, this is kind of a big, you know, change for me mm -hmm. in terms of the culture. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I, I, I didn't think it was such a big change, but I did see one part of a big change was when I was at Calvary uh, Mainstream, um, I think uh, typically when you went to a service, you just kind of, you went mm -hmm. and did worship and you just left. And oftentimes every now and then you would just meet up with people, but you would just go. Yeah, you wouldn't okay, stay. Okay. It was no... Uh, no, no hanging out. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, pe no lunch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no lunch. Yeah. No, they didn't give you food. I mean, lunch is a staple of a uh, Korean immigrant church, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so that was a big change too. Like, okay. I'm not like going, wow, they're actually serving food here. I'm not like going, I'm not used to that. Because even when you just showed up, it yeah. was just more like maybe every now and then they'll give you coffee. But yes, yes, that, yes. that would be about it. Yeah. You know, I remember, uh, you know, uh, I was... I was in Atlanta for four years as a college, and then when I went to a Korean church, you know, KMEM Pontex Church, I dressed like this. You know, I thought this was, oh, this is pretty, you know, something casual, but I saw all the college students wearing tie. Wow. So I said, wow, this is really different culture, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, after that, I started wearing tie. And then, on contrary, when I went to Colorado Springs, you know, had a training there, and uh, weekend, we wanted to visit like a church in Denver, American church in Denver. And I noticed that, oh, I didn't bring my dress shoes. So, so I went to Walmart and buy, buy the dress shoes and wearing that. And then I saw like a lot of people wearing sandals, right? <laughs> okay, well, what, what, what did he do, do that for? Yeah. So a lot of cult cultural uh, differences. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, uh, uh, now you are um, living near USC. Right hosting international students. Right. What kind of international students are you hosting? Are you uh, hosting uh, different types of international students? Or uh, they're from a lot of different nationalities? You know, you have a mainstream uh, Korean, uh, well, mainstream American culture and then Korean American culture. Now you are dealing with different cultures from different world. Right. So I guess that, I don't know, that transitional training in your background kind of helped you uh, interact with the um, international students. Right. Yeah. Uh, going back to the uh, the uh, EM and KM yeah, relationship, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think ahead. one of the wonderful things that I got to witness mm -hmm. while I was at Young Knock was uh, being a part of a uh, partnership between the two congregations. Okay. And that was through Love LA. So Love LA okay. was a an outreach um, ministry. That's through Young Knock yes. Church. Okay. It was, so it was an outreach uh, ministry mm -hmm. uh, that was focused on um, you know just reaching the uh, the folks in the Skid Row community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we would provide a weekly uh, Sunday service on, in the parking lot. Okay. And so. Uh, part of it was that um, it was such a unique uh, partnership between the EM and the KM because mm. in the KM side, 
they actually provided the foods that okay. they would prepare during the uh, s Sunday service at the church on site, mm -hmm. and then they would just ba bag them all together. And okay. then um, they, the EM, what we would do is we would provide the, the connection of just really providing a, uh, a Sunday service okay. in, where we would actually have someone come out um, doing the praise and okay. you know the worship and yeah, yeah, also yeah, yeah. Uh, someone who would be preaching okay, okay, okay. Um, and so okay. it was basically kind of like a church in the parking lot okay do you guys have one location or did you go to a different location this was just one location one location yeah okay. so we okay. did that for i mean we started in one location and okay. then we moved to Di different, different locations. locations and then we ultimately landed in one particular location that we stayed for a while. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but while I was there, I, th I, I thought it was such a wonderful, uh, unique, uh, uh, and a beautiful uh, mm -hmm. partnership of mm -hmm. the two groups mm -hmm. because I think that each um, of the uh, groups worked on, upon their strengths, okay, yeah, what they yeah. would be able to provide. And so I thought that was just such a wonderful, um, I guess in some ways, a, a testimony yes, of yes. how God was using mm -hmm. two different congregations mm -hmm. and how they can work together to really further God's kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I think that's, that's awesome because KM, they like to serve and make things. And the EM, you know, uh, have an ability to reach out to uh, local communities. Right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so that's good, that's good. Yeah, yeah so going back to your yeah. other question about yeah. international students. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, we've been hosting uh, students nearby USC. So okay. we live just very close to um, mm -hmm. the campus. And we've been doing it since 2015, uh, where we oh, had students live- Almost 10 years now. Yeah, so we had students live with us since 2015. Okay. And the students that have, so I actually going back to 2015, the first uh, international student that we mm -hmm. hosted, mm -hmm. she was actually a Fulbright scholar uh, oh. from Romania. And okay. um, so she brought her family. So wow. it, can you imagine a family living with another family? <laughs> and so we had two families living in under one roof. Okay, okay, and okay. So thankfully it was only three or four months. Okay. So we didn't, we didn't have it for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I thought that was such a really interesting time. It was chaotic, mm -hmm. but it was also beautiful. Okay. Um, and God just worked through all of that. And it was su such a, I guess it was sort of our uh, way to just really dive in fully of being a host family. Um, and since then, um, we've hosted students primarily. We've, um, I learned that many, um, I guess, students from Saudi Arabia were okay. coming through scholarship. And they were very curious about like, living with uh, American families. Okay, okay. And so uh, I had learned about that. And mm -hmm. so I said, okay, you know, I'd love to see if something would come about mm -hmm. in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. actually prayed and said, God, would you just bring a Saudi? Okay, okay. Um, I think um, after a course of different things happening, uh -huh. yeah, uh, we ended up having a Saudi live with us. Okay, And okay. then from there, we had an Indonesian student live with us. Okay. And then from there, uh, uh, someone from Brazil. And then just, so those are uh, some of the different countries that okay. have lived within our house. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is that we never had to advertise um, our um, home. It's I mean, it was just word all of word of mouth. That's people awesome. just Yeah, so just yeah. people would just hear about the fact that, hey, there's a family that lives near USC. Uh -huh. And they're hosting students, yeah, 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 and they're yeah. just and uh, for the most part, everybody just seemed to just like hear about us. And I, I think there were so many times that I had to turn people away because we didn't really have the capacity okay, okay, okay. to um, have okay. everyone live with us. But, okay, okay, okay. Um, so we typically we've had maybe about two or three students live with us. Okay, at, at, at a time. Yeah, and okay. most and a lot of the students, they're all graduate students. So the okay. so the time period that they stay with us is a lot shorter. Shorter than on yeah. The so they stay with us like for a year to two years, okay. depending on their program. Okay. okay. And so yeah, I think over the course of our time of uh, having students live with us, mm -hmm. we've appreciated a lot of their culture, mm -hmm. where their you know their views in life, yeah, and yeah. also the food that they yeah. would often bring. Yeah. Now, maybe not so f for the guys, because uh -huh. they didn't really know much about cooking. <laughs> but for the women that did live with us, they did a lot of cooking. Okay, and okay. so we would 
smell that. So there was like su such aroma in our house. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes people would just go, oh my gosh, how, why would you do that? Yeah, but yeah, 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 I just yeah. think that it's just such a beautiful thing to just really provide a space for them to really say, hey, you know, yeah. we welcome you guys. Yeah, yeah. I know that you mentioned about the Love LA and and when you do Love LA, you kind of serve different ethnic groups in the community. So do you, do you had a, uh, you had a vision for this? Oh, I, I, maybe I need to, I want to serve, uh, you know, different groups. Uh, where was that, you know, uh, thought, oh, came about through uh, Love LA or you had it before or? I think there were different things. Okay, okay. I think that part of it was Love LA. There was also part of it, it was just because I think we live in a city that is very diverse. Yeah. There's people from all over the world that mm -hmm. at our coming. I kind of uh, came to this um, realization that that just the reality of mm -hmm. that being mm -hmm. more so. Yeah. And uh, as many other people who are coming from all parts mm -hmm. of the world, I think that's just a wonderful opportunity as a follower of Christ to show not only biblical hospitality, yeah, but to yeah. welcome the stranger, which yeah. is so, so much uh, found in scripture. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, I think also uh, part of it is also learning that my father also came as an international student oh, back in the days. I see. And okay, so okay, for okay, him okay, to okay. hear stories about his yeah, experience, I, see, I, I was see, like I going, wow. So it's in some ways, it's like a full circle in okay. some ways where okay. um, we get to be able to bless others. Okay. Yeah, I, I would imagine it would be so awesome and nice to encounter different cultures, you know, coming, you, you, you don't have to travel to different countries, they come to you, your house, you're just sitting there. And uh, is there any incidents that cultural conflicts or, or, or any uneasiness because of the different culture, uh, not only different culture, but different religion, right? Comes to your, you know, uh, uh, how is that? Uh, for like last nine years. Yeah. yeah, so I would say it hasn't been easy. I mean, okay. there are some things that I think um, there are some commonalities and things that we kind of like share, you know, mm -hmm. shared experiences. Mm -hmm. But then uh, obviously there are some cultural things that are kind of like, yeah, obviously you're going to do a lot of cultural f uh, faux pas, like yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going to mess up here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, but sure. I think more and more there's this sense of grace. I okay. think we, we show grace, but then they also show grace too. They're mm. gracious to us because mm. they don't. They also know that we don't know mm -hmm. everything about mm. their culture. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I think it's also the posture of grace yeah. as well as also learning. Learning okay. the uh, aspect of just kind of like, hey, I'm just here to learn more about your culture too because okay. I don't know much about it. Okay. And um, so upon that, I think they show this sense of like, wow, you are taking the time to learn my culture. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to, you didn't have mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think just, uh, it's such a wonderful opportunity to even just learn and understand other cultures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, that's awesome. And the uh, other uh, part of it is that my father, I mean, he loved to travel. And, okay. uh, and he had such a deep appreciation for other cultures. Okay. So part of that might have also influenced, influenced and shaped you. my understanding of yeah. about how to accept other cultures yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and you know, people from different places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So even though they don't go to, you know, so is it some time kind of downtime? They, they leave to their own country and come back or they still, still stay? Uh, in U.S. during summertime, how does it go? So initially we used to have like a little bit of a downtime during the summer, mm -hmm. but what we found that more and more recently that many of the students, they do come during the summer. Um, okay. They're usually here for like a one-year program or okay. they come here a little bit early just because they want to be a ahead of everybody else in terms okay. of like finding housing okay. and different things like that. So we found that more and more it's not, we don't have a downtime, it's just mm -hmm. more we have little breaks in between here and there, mm -hmm. but yeah, but I think it's sort of like where our house is open almost mm -hmm. every day of the year, but it's, okay, it's okay, been okay. a real blessing though. Okay. So. You, you told me that there's uh, different uh, uh, types of students from different country and obviously different uh, students with different religious background, uh, maybe even, I don't know if you had Chinese uh, students who's, who doesn't even, probably have any religion because, you know, uh, communists uh, do not allow any, you know, relig religion uh, per se. 
uh, or uh, uh, some Middle East who has a uh, most Muslim as a religion. Uh, was there any uh, conflicts in your home because of that, or how do you use that as uh, how how do you cope with that with different? Because I, I would imagine that living together, not just meeting uh, once or twice a week, but me living together. For, for me, I don't know, uh, it would be very stressful for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't think there's been any real uh, okay, conflicts. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. I think that, if anything, uh, we come with a posture of um, being respectful. Okay. Um, and just kind of really... Um, saying, hey, you know, I know that maybe th this person may have a very entirely different belief mm -hmm. than uh, what we believe. Okay. But we do kind of um, share at the very beginning that we are followers of Christ. Okay. And okay. we don't shy away with that. Okay. okay. But I think they come with that understanding. Okay. So is that, that's the first thing. It's like, are they willing to live with uh, people see, of I faith? See. That, that love Jesus. I see. And so when they see that that is happening, mm -hmm. I think they also come with this attitude, for the most part, to be respectful as well. Okay, okay, okay. And so when we are, uh, show respectfulness mm -hmm. to each other, mm -hmm. I think that uh, it allows us to uh, have conversations okay. and, and not have to be so like conflict oriented, okay. but it, to have it, ways that we say, hey, you know, how important, what is important to you? What okay. is important? What, what do you value? And, okay. and, and I think that's something that I find, find that uh, we have a lot of these deeper conversations is okay. that more and more we get to uncover a little bit more about, hey, so what do you truly believe? Okay, and, well, that's uh, awesome. And yeah. so it's been really wonderful to have these conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's awesome. I know these days there's a lot of um, demonstration going on in the college campuses and I know that you know, you uh, host uh, students from USC, which there were a lot of uh, uh, demonstration going on. And even I heard that the grad main gradu graduation was canceled. So did it ha have any effect on you and your students? Yeah. Um, I want to say it was kind of, it was disruptive because okay. I think at the timing of it all, mm -hmm. I think um, even with the students that live with us, um, Okay they found it to be very inconvenient because mm -hmm. um, this is the time when they, everything, like they're kind of coming up to their finals. They want to finish their yes. semester. Yes, yes, uh, yes. They put all that effort and time into mm -hmm. their studies mm -hmm. and they want to finish well. Mm -hmm. And many of the students who are graduate students, they're there mm -hmm. only for a short time. Mm -hmm. So they, they know that they have to really um, do well. Okay, and okay, a lot okay. of them are also coming through like scholarship and everything. So okay, okay, okay. I think they don't want to uh, fail. They don't want to uh, be in a position where um, their um, status is compromised, yeah, but yeah, they yeah, also yeah. want to be able to finish their program. Yeah, and yeah. so um, for us, uh, even just you know having access to the campus has mm -hmm. been very limited okay. because um, as I don't know if everyone's familiar with USC. Mm -hmm. USC is sort of like, sort of like an, almost like it's gated. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have yeah. different gates. Okay, okay. And so I think even during this t the height of the protest, uh -huh. they actually closed down and they only allowed two entry points. Oh, and so you very, had to very have... Odd inconvenience. Yeah, and so you had to have a student ID or, you know, a valid reason for yes, being yes, on campus. Yes, yes. And so it was quite limiting, and mm -hmm. I think even just talking with different students, they found it to mm -hmm. be very inconvenient mm -hmm. because it adds another stress to them mm -hmm. because they have to not think about um, the fact that, hey, I have my finals coming up. Mm -hmm. I have to think about how do I finish and study well and and prepare well yeah, yeah, and yeah. then on top of that to ha actually have all of this that was you know emotionally charged yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, happening and yeah. I, I'm guessing a lot of the students I didn't get really into their uh, viewpoints on okay, that okay, but okay. I'm sure they all have their own opinions about okay, their okay. Uh, where they uh, are coming from so okay. a lot of them they weren't able to share because they were just focused on their studies oh I see I see so the demonstration still going on there's a, a limited access right now too um, my understanding is that um, I think they, they had the encampment. They kind of basically closed the campus and they mm -hmm. limited the protest. So the protest is mainly just among the students. They okay, don't okay, have okay. any outside protesters coming yeah. to join them. Yeah. And so it's, uh, which, you know, 
for the students, they have the right to protest. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. you know, our country, we have yeah, that free yeah, freedom in that. Yeah, yeah. But I think when you have other outside um, folks know, who uh, that, fuel the that fire. A lot, yeah, a lot of campuses, that's what ha what's yeah, been going to Yeah, time. because yeah. then when you have outsiders come in to fuel mm -hmm. the fire, mm -hmm. that only um, uh, makes a lot more intensity. Yeah. And so I think um, that because it's been, you know, in a closed uh, setting, mm -hmm. I think it kind of limited the, uh, it erupting it to become more than what it is. But okay. uh, definitely uh, it is kind of heightened things okay, emotionally okay, 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 for okay. many people. Okay. But I think, um, yeah, I think there's still um, some protest happening. Okay. But I don't think it's uh, as intense as other okay, campuses. Okay. I, don't, I don't know the situation, uh, but it's, it's, it really does, it's not really affecting your uh, kind of environment, your situation. So is there any like, in your uh, house, any um, children from Arab that that's kind of has, has a viewpoint on this? We did have one student, who, uh -huh. but he he finished this program, so he went back like oh I see I before see, I see. all of this happened. Okay, okay. But okay, he okay. knew, you know, all the, uh, although I know he um, was kind of following the news, yeah, what yeah, was yeah. happening in yeah, Gaza. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know he, it it was pretty intense. Yeah. I know he also was kind of stressed out too with yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I hadn't really had a real like, I guess, uh, honest talk with okay. any of the students okay, that okay, are okay. coming from that area yeah, yeah, yeah. to hear their viewpoints and what yeah. they personally think about it. Yeah. But I know that even in where we live, we would often hear a lot of helicopters flying. Okay, okay, okay. okay. And so it was really interesting to hear that quite often, which we don't really hear it as often, but yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. we do every now and then, but yeah. this is a lot more frequent than yeah. Um, typical. Yeah. You know, I, in my church, uh, there's one um, member who's a Palestinian, you know, American, and then she feels very strongly about um, the war yeah, that, that's going on and uh, companies that uh, support Israel. Uh, so, uh, so we used to have this, you know, I used to take my, um, my ministry out to uh, college and career ministry, uh, people who are college and career at that area, age, out to Starbucks once a, once a week for, for drink. And then and she said, you shouldn't go to Starbucks because, you know, they support, uh, I, don't know, I don't know the facts, but, you know, uh, they support Israel. So, okay, uh, but, you know, we have to consider other viewpoints too, right? So I said, okay, you know what? So we're not going to go to Starbucks every time, but we're going to go there every other time <laughs> to make a compromise. Yeah, so uh, even like, even in my church, uh, what's going on there kind of affects our ministry there. Yeah, right, so that's, right. yeah, that's kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean, it, it, it is quite a, uh, yeah, it's very uh, intense moment, uh -huh. and and I I know it's a complex issue. Yeah, it's yeah. not something that's very easy for us to. Yeah. And I know that even just as believers, we we, it is something that we ought to wrestle with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's sure, something sure. that we have to really, especially yeah. if you have, um, you know, for uh, for us personally, we have uh, students coming from yeah. the Gulf and region as mm -hmm. well as in the mm -hmm. Middle East, and mm -hmm. so. I think for us, we have to be with, um, um, go with the lens of understanding, but yeah, then also yeah. try to see that there's two sides of things. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there, you know, uh, in, 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 in any culture, in any nation, in any country, it's not just that incident, but the history behind it. Yeah. Right. So that right. affects the whole thing. Which is really, yeah. it makes it very complex. Yeah. It's not an easy thing for us to yeah, really yeah, say, yeah. hey, there's like this one solution. Yeah. That's true, that's true, yeah. Do you have anything else to say? Uh, any, anything that you want to uh, uh, mention? How's your family doing? Doing they're, good? They're doing good, they're okay. doing good. Um, you know, we have our son who is now yeah. uh, a teenager. Uh, he's gonna be going into high school in the fall. Okay, okay. And that's just kind of crazy okay. for us to even think about. Okay. But, um, yeah, but it's, it's been really cool to see yeah. him grow. and. Yeah. I mean, he does exhibit some of the teen angst. <laughs> of course. Which that's typical. And all the teen and, does. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But I think that just also to see um, some of the things like, you know, he's really passionate about, which is really fun to see. Okay, okay, okay. 
I, I know that he's being homeschooled. Yes. You, are you, are you, you're not, so is it okay to talk about that? Yeah, Home, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, I know that a lot of our parents homeschool, especially, you know, uh, in, you know Caucasian Americans, they, but I, I rarely see Korean American homeschool. Right? I only know maybe one family that homeschools. So uh, how's, how has it for your, been for your family? Um, I think it's, it's been good so far. Okay. Um, so we, we're doing um, a homeschooling, like a hybrid. So he actually okay. goes to uh, school okay. three days of the week. Okay. And so we um, found that um, uh, he's going uh, to a Christian classical education. Uh, school. Okay. And Christian so, classical education. Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that in itself is a whole different conversation. Okay. In okay, itself, okay, okay. But um, yeah, so he's been doing that and um, I think he enjoys it um, because he's an only child. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's good for him to have like some social outlet yeah. and to be able to interact with other kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's nice. That's nice. So he's, um, so he's going to high school. And you in, still intend to homeschool him at the end of the high school and then, you know, just, yeah, have him go to college. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And he likes it. I think so. Okay. That's yeah, good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> he hasn't said anything bad. I mean, yeah, no, but I think he enjoys it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for being in our podcast and thank you for uh, just coming and sharing your story. Uh, yeah. I mean, every uh, guest that we have, a is unique background, but I think yours is special because uh, uh, because the the you know uh, the work that you're doing uh, in 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 college campus and uh, also your background, you know how yeah. you came from the mainstream and and came to Korean culture. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you know maybe just like my final thought is that mm -hmm. I guess. Um, I think, you know, just in terms of like what we do is mainly because, you know, we're not only um, showing biblical hospitality mm -hmm. by welcoming the stranger mm -hmm. and also because, you know, the gospel in, in its sense be, being the good news, yeah. it also kind of really does, it disrupts our, our comforts, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it changes us and makes us and, and, and challenges us. And for, for me personally, I think that uh, in everything that we do in our home, mm -hmm. you, whether it's our um, conversations with our international students or just, just in everyday life, mm -hmm. we do our everything to just point people to Christ. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we that's do. Awesome. And that's yeah. the thing that we ultimately uh, want to do. Yeah. And yeah. Um, even just the, the students that come into uh -huh. our home, you know, we just tell them, the reason why we do what we do okay. and that is because okay. we follow Christ yeah, he yeah, commands yeah. us to love yeah, others yeah, yeah. Yeah. and also we just point them to him yeah 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 that's awesome yeah that's awesome work that you're doing and yeah we, we applaud it yeah thank you thank you very much well, thank nice. you for having me oh thank you thanks for coming <laughs> <laughs>